how nice is it waking up to the birds like that it's very nice that's how nice it is man I smell so bad today haven't had a shower since the the trip began and that's three nights sleeping in the bush and sweating every day so yeah I'm gonna need a proper wash soon 730 that for me is a lie-in let's go head good body good feet good all good There's a little bit of blue sky poking out of the cloud up ahead. Hasn't rained over the past few days, which I'm really grateful for. It's nice to not have wet gear, wet tent and all that. But it also would be nice to have the sun come out to play for a few days, even just one day. And to be able to lie there and soak up all the vitamin D and just feel all the good feels that you get when it's sunny out, you know. So I'm all good, I'm, I'm a bit tired at the end of the day, a bit more tired than usual, but that's because I haven't done any exercise over the last year. Just been really demotivated exercise wise. And uh, I know I look skinny in the videos, but I have a big belly and that kind of makes me feel sick when I walk for a long distance as I think anyone would. <laughs> so it's all good. I, honestly, I'm feeling stronger by the day. I'm feeling like I'm building it up. And I know that at this stage, it's all about just keep going. Just take care of your body. Don't overdo it. Just keep going. Persevere. This is so relaxing walking along here. Forest either side of me. Birds singing in each one. Just more than ever people need this. I'm talking about myself too, right? Just really need this at this time in my life. Just had a lovely chat with three crazy ultra runners there. Peter Ferris from Coleraine, Michelle from England, and I believe Dieter from Germany, I want to say. And I was left with a lovely feeling after talking with them. They were ever so friendly, right? So that feeling I was left with, it was a feeling of gratefulness because that interaction, that one interaction, that small moment of my day left me with a feeling that the world is a good place and people are inherently good, which they are. And this is something I found in all of my long distance trips, whether it was the year I spent cycling through Africa or my walk through America or my walk around Ireland two years ago. You experience this time and time again and it leaves you in no doubt that the world is a good place. You know, and all the things that we're afraid of out there in terms of travel or whatever it is we might be thinking of, it's mostly not true or at the very least, it's not going to happen. This is not what it's supposed to look like. There's just so many gnats here. They're nipping away all over my legs and my head. So I made my, cooked my noodles right here real quick. And I just gotta walk now. Cause you could just couldn't sit there and eat with them around. You'd either have to put up the tent and hide inside that. Or what I'm gonna do now is just walk until I find somewhere with no gnats, which is unlikely. <laughs> I just keep walking until the noodles are gone, which is likely.
just camped up in the forest here. I'm gonna make some coffee, read my book in the tent. I need to get inside the tent because there's a lot of midges around. It's all good though. I'm more than happy to lie down in the tent now, take off my shoes and socks and relax. In case there's anyone watching this video and asking themselves why am I afraid to go wild camping it's because you're not a psychopath all right it's because you're not a psychopath at some point or another everybody is or was afraid to go wild camping I just so happen to have done this hundreds and hundreds of times in Ireland so I'm kind of past that now and there's nothing anyone can give you to make you less afraid, even a gun, even a weapon. I'm going to tell you a short story that will maybe help you digest what I've just said or work this out in your own mind, deal with the fear that is. A number of years ago, my life was a complete mess. A complete mess. It was very self-destructive. My parents had passed away and I kind of was using that as an excuse almost to feel like a victim and to feel like everything and everyone in my right life was getting in the way sort of thing but it got to the point where I was utterly just exhausted physically and mentally just exhausted and I realised I gotta do something now because <laughs> this isn't going too well and it's not gonna go where I want it to go so I gotta go and try something different with my life and I didn't know what that would look like I just knew that I had to, to change so I went off and decided to do this trip I won't go into the details but I decided to do this trip a challenge an adventure I decided to ride my bicycle through Africa I didn't actually have a bicycle at the time I had no cycling experience in fact or camping experience but I decided I was going to spend one year traveling through Africa on a bicycle and there I was going to deal with my problems. I was going to figure out who I was, what I wanted to do with my life, and what all of this is about. <laughs> and so every night, you can imagine in, in Africa, I'm thinking about what animals are outside, like hyena, lion, elephant. And believe me, those animals were there, especially in Botswana, where the likes of lion roam free. But as a couple of months passed, I started to get bored of feeling so worried and stressed all the time. Because that's what was happening. I was terrified. I wet myself in the tent on more than one occasion. I fainted on more than one occasion out of sheer fear. Just sitting in the tent like this with my torch, little torch to protect me. And I fainted. But after a couple of months of that, I got bored of it. And... More importantly, I realised through first-hand experiences, the first-hand experience being this, that what I was afraid of, either number one, didn't exist, or number two, was extremely unlikely to ever happen. And so when I came back to Ireland, after being wild camping in Africa so long, it didn't seem like such a big deal going out and camping among the sheep and the deer and the elk. 